Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As always, if it is your first time joining us, then welcome in general. Uh, we are going to finish working on a few things on the Jeep Wrangler here. Uh, this is my 99 TJ that I inherited from my aunt that passed away. Uh, I've done a few other videos on it. If you haven't seen those, then feel free to visit the channel, check them out, uh, get yourself kind of caught up. Anyway, uh, today we are going to, like I said, finish up the last couple of things really that I wanted to get done on this and that is replacing the soft top and installing a hitch in the back. Now as you're looking at it you probably noticed that well this top on here is well it looks new and that's because it is. Uh, I did already replace the top but it has a manufacturer defect in it, so I have been waiting for Best Top to send me a replacement top, and I'll actually record the installation on this one. Uh, I didn't before because I was in kind of a crunch. I wanted to get it done, and well, recording everything takes three times longer. Uh, you will also, when you look at it here, once I move the camera back, you'll notice that the hitch is actually already installed as well. And that's because I ordered it and comes in a big box that was in the way and I just wanted to get it thrown on and it's really only four bolts. Uh, we're gonna focus more on the wiring of it today than anything. And the top I'm probably gonna do tomorrow. It'll be this video, but I'm gonna do that tomorrow because it's really overcast and raining out today and I wanna be able to lay it out and get some of the wrinkles out of it. So that's what we're gonna work on today. Uh, what we're going to be using for the wiring. Now on these Jeeps, you could just get a four wire pigtail and tie it into the existing tail lights and it'll work. However, why screw around with that when you can get a harness that just plugs in? Now, some people may say, well, because it's cheaper. Yeah, but how much is your time worth? Not to mention, Nobody that ever puts in those stupid pigtail harnesses ever makes good connections on them. And then your wires corrode and then other crap doesn't work. So quit being cheap, uh, save yourself some time and some energy and get one of the plug and play harnesses. I mean, it, it just makes sense. So what this is, and this is, there's multiple companies that make these. You can go with any one of them. They're pretty simple. There's nothing to get screwed up on them. This one is made by Mecmo, Mecmo, I don't know, M-E-C-M-O. I'll put a link to it from where I got it. I think, pretty sure I got this one on Amazon. Uh, but it's just got your normal four flat connector. Pay no mind to the white wire. Normal four flat connector. And then harnesses on either side. You go up, unplug the uh, factory lights. These get plugged in in between it and it just taps in. So makes it super easy. So we'll kind of go through that real quick and then uh, we will worry about fixing the top here. So let me get you unbolted here and I'll show you why or what it is I'm replacing. All right, so the top, like I said, it's new, it's good. Uh, there was nothing wrong actually with the top that was on it other than it was old and kind of faded, but still sealed great. And it's this exact same top. Uh, you will have little, you know, creases and stuff. It's a soft top. That's the way it is. What you should not have is this. And I went round and round with Best Top and they kept telling me that I needed to adjust the little tabs and we'll get into that to get rid of this. But if you actually look at the stitching, that weird crease is sewn into the stitching. That's a defect. So we're gonna replace it because of that. Best Top finally sent me it. Looking at it, uh, I opened it up. It looks like the new one is good to go. Uh, like I said, you will have a little bit of a deal right there and I'll explain why later but it shouldn't be as bad as the other side is. So that's kind of what we're going to be working on here but like I said we're going to start with the trailer hitch and do the top tomorrow. All right so looking underneath the Jeep here like I said 
I've already installed the hitch, obviously. It's right here. It's stupid simple. It comes with uh, four bolts and the two in the front, or well, I say in front, it's actually in the back. Let me get this right. Two in the far back just go into the factory threaded holes that are already in the frame. Over on the driver's side, you have to remove the uh, tow hook off of it, but those come out, stick the hitch up there, run the new provided bolts right into the uh, existing nut zerts. And then for the back ones, comes with bolts with uh, holders so they don't spin. They're a carriage bolt. Uh, it goes through these holders so they don't spin inside the frame so you can just rail down on that nut and hold it into place. Now, to get that uh, bolt into place, they give you this little fishing wire that you're supposed to push through that hole up to an existing hole on the frame. However, this little thing is only about 18 inches long. So I think that their actual theory is that you're going to, let me see if I can move this and get light where it needs to be. I think their actual theory is that you're supposed to fish it from that hole up to, where is it? Get some light in this situation. I think they think you're gonna fish it up to uh, this slotted hole right here, which is kind of hard to see. Let's see if I can get better light. That hole right there and then feed the bolt through there. Well, the problem on my Jeep is, is that that hole is not big enough yet because my frame isn't rusty. So the bolt doesn't fit through that hole. So what I had to do is I ended up using like an electrical fish tape and then I just taped on this thing to it so that it was long enough to get all the way over to that hole. And then I was able to fish it through there. So that was the only thing kind of tricky about the installation. Uh, like I said, not a big deal. So onto the wiring. All right, so this is what the harness looks like once you get it unbundled. You've got two groups of wires coming off your uh, four pin. The one with the green wires goes over to the passenger side. The one with the yellow wires goes over to the driver's side. What you're gonna do, let's see if I can get myself in position here and shed some light on the situation. You gotta loosen up your splash guard here and I believe it looks like it's just one push pin and then we should be able to kind of swing it out and stick our hands up, up inside there to get at the plugs. Like I said, we'll fish these wires up there. Uh, one plug goes into the uh, connector. The other plug goes back out to the light. Route them down over to the hitch and should be good to go. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fully record this, but we'll see if we can at least get a couple shots in for you. All right, so what I have done, this is a terrible position to try to record. I have routed the wiring up. I went on the backside of the hitch and the frame kind of between the frame and the gas tank, up over the top of the uh, frame rail, over into this area here. This is where your connector is going to be. This is the connector right here. It's got some foam tape wrapped around it just to keep it from rattling around in there. Uh, same thing over on the other side. So we're gonna take off this foam tape That's not needed where we're going. Much easier to do if you're not holding a camera. All right, foam tape's gone.
We've got a tab to press down on here. Press it down. And in theory, should be able to unplug it. Give me a second, let me set the camera down so I can do that. Okay. Plugs are unplugged. You'll have a male and a female. Uh, I am going to go ahead and grab some dielectric grease, put it on these connectors to help seal them up so we don't have any corrosion issues in the future. Bring you back around and show you that. Okay, after finding said uh, dielectric grease, we're gonna put a little bit on the connectors here. And I realize it's probably out of the frame, but uh, yeah, we're plugging stuff together. All right, you can kind of see here, goes into the harness and then back out to the tail lights. Now, the other thing that we have over on this side is this white wire comes with a ring terminal on it. This has to be grounded. Now you, in theory, could screw it into any of the pieces of metal around here, uh, not the gas tank shroud, and that would technically work. I'm gonna try to avoid drilling holes into the body of this thing, and I think what we're gonna try and do is route this white wire up through the tail light and ground it inside there where the tail light grounds to. So let me get that uh, pulled apart real quick and we'll see if we can make that happen. All right, so what I have done here, took a knife, put a small slit in this black tubing that the wiring comes through. I cut off the ring terminal that came on the wire and shoved that white wire through and into the actual light. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and set this back up in place. Let me get two of the bolts started here so that the light's not flopping around. We're going to go ahead and just put a new ring terminal on it. So that is what the finished product is here. We can go ahead and zip the cover back on. All right, so that is basically it. I've got all of the wires tie wrapped along the back side of the receiver hitch here. And make sure you leave yourself enough wire that you can get out and plug into your trailer, but not so much that it's going to be dangling and dragging on the ground. Any extra wire, make sure you just go ahead and route it up uh, and probably tie wrap it up like I did underneath the uh, tail light there. That way, if the tail light ever has to be pulled out, you're not, you know, banjo string tight on your wiring there. So uh, save yourself the trouble there. And I have some goo that I put in the plug there so it doesn't corrode. And then what I always do is I usually take the little rubber cover, put it through the chain hooks, and then put the cover on. And you can kind of tuck the extra wire back in there so it's not flopping around too much. But if it were to fall out, we don't have enough to drag on the ground. That kind of keeps that out of the way. Uh, now, I have mentioned in a couple of the videos that I planned on putting a trailer hitch on there. And I'll explain this again. These Jeeps only have 2,000 pound towing rating. And I want to say the hitch is rated at, I believe, 500 pounds of uh, tongue weight on it. 
I have no intentions of towing with this. It might see a utility trailer with a lawn tractor on it. And that's about the majority of it. Main thing is I have a bike rack uh, so I can put a bike rack in the hitch and carry bikes. So don't worry about it, but you might as well, if you got the receiver, you better have the wiring for it too, just in case. Uh, that and the bike rack has a tendency to block tail lights, so I've got a small light on it, you know, kind of like a third brake light type of deal. So anyway, this is it on here. The other thing I have uh, heard from people because I've mentioned that this frame is not rusty. Uh, people have said, oh yeah, it's probably rusted out from the inside out. And yes, these do rust from the inside out. And they give me crap in emails about putting a hitch on it and I'm gonna break the frame in half because it's not as good as I think it is. Well, we're gonna check into that. And that brings us to our next thing. All right guys, so I don't do reviews or unboxing videos, but this company reached out to me and wanted me to do a review on this product. Now I have been approached by multiple companies that want to send me something in exchange for a review. This one is a little bit different because all the other companies, they want me to do a review before they've even sent me the product, which seems like crap to me. So. This company actually uh, sent me this, asked me to do a review on it, and they also wanted me to do like an unboxing video and all that stuff, but we're not, I mean, yeah, I'll take it out of the box, but I don't do unboxing videos, so here we go. Uh, it is Depths Tech is the brand, and it, this is the model DS520. It is a, according to them, professional industrial it is an endoscope. I don't know if it's professional or industrial yet. Uh, I mean, I, I don't plan on using this professionally, so can't really answer to that. Um, this unit does have five inch screen, supposedly is 1080p resolution. I don't know what this Blue Art 3.0 image tech is, no clue. Uh, Semi-rigid cable. Basically that means that the uh, cable for your camera there can be kind of formed into position so you can stick it wherever it needs to go. IP67 waterproof probe. I don't know like the specifics of that, but I do know that IP67 meets my requirements, so good enough. And it is lithium ion battery, so it is rechargeable. You don't have to have any external batteries or any junk like that. So uh, they I, I just kind of briefly did a quick search on the company and it looks like they've got a few different options on these. This is the single lens unit. Uh, looks like they have a dual lens and a triple lens as well. And I have flies in the garage here. Anyway, so it also looks like you can get different colored buttons, which, come on, let's quit wasting our time and money with different colored buttons, that's unimportant. But anyway, uh, it is made in China. Um, I mean, that's pretty much commonplace. Uh, you can tell because their slogan, all for your joy. Um, yeah, I don't know what that has to do with endoscopes, but yeah, anyway. So we'll open it up, see what it is. And then uh, we'll go ahead and stick it down one of the holes in the frame rail of the Jeep. See what our rust situation is. All right, nice thing. Does come with a, uh, a case for it. Open it up, instruction manual. We're not gonna look at that. Uh, reason being is because I wanna know if this is something that's easy to use, so we're just gonna try to use it. Looks like main unit itself. Warning label, we don't need that. Actually, what does it say? It says make sure the uh, USB cable's plugged in all the way. Okay, yep, we can do that. All right, unit itself, it's not, I mean, it's a little bit bulky over here. I would presume that that's where the battery is, but it does give you something to hold on to, so that's not terrible. Uh, 
Let's see what else we got here. Presumably the camera. Yep. Got the camera. USB cable for charging. And that looks like some attachments that you can clip onto the end of it. Looks like there's maybe a magnet, a hook, and a mirror so that you can, uh, when you stick the camera down into something, the mirror will shine back 45 degrees or whatever. So, all right. Looking this over, uh, looks like we've got a cover here, USB-C charger, which that's nice. Uh, SD card slot, so apparently you can record on this. Uh, so that that is a nice feature. I would presume that you can plug this into your computer or whatever through the USB-C and pull the images off that SD card. Uh, looks like this is our USB slot. Let me get this uh, cable stretched out just a little bit and we'll see how that works for us. All right, I don't see an actual power button. Nothing labeled as power. Press and hold, let's try that. There we go. It doesn't take too long to boot up. All right, seems to work. Screen is nice, decent size. Uh, it does, I guess, show you that, let me see here, get this screen dark. It does show you that you have an SD card installed. It shows you your battery life. Uh, down on the bottom, it's got a timestamp on it, so that's kind of nice. Let's see here. It is lighted on the end of it. Uh, let's see, just guessing here. See if we can control the, the light output. Yep. It looks like it only has four levels of lighting, so unfortunately it's not like a nothing you can vary real nicely. Um, let's see, we've got, looks like maybe the ability to snap a photo. Yep. Uh, let's see. Looks like if you press and hold it, it'll start actually recording video. So that's nice. I'm sure there's no, I mean, I, not I'm sure, I'm positive there's no audio or anything to it. All right. Assuming the gear is the menu, yes. A few options that you can change from. All right. Seems to uh, do everything one would maybe want it to do in theory. Let's take it over to the Jeep, take a look at the frame. Set this down here, hopefully where you guys can see. Try and get sure you guys don't have a glare, which is going to be challenging. All right, we're gonna bump her up one light level. And one thing that's kind of annoying with these endoscopes is it's hard to tell what direction anything is. They never seem to mark the camera's top and bottom when you're trying to twirl stuff around, it's uh, usually like a reverse image, so it's kind of hard to gauge where you're at with things. But 
All right, we're gonna go in the hole in the frame rail that is right in front of the uh, rear wheel, that hole right there. We're gonna stick her on in there and see what we see. Now I did treat my frame with a uh, fluid film. So that's what that gooey stuff is that you're gonna see in there. Okay, that is sand and grit, not much, uh, in the bottom of the frame. That right there, those are the bolts that uh, hold the side steps on, factory side steps. Let me pull this back out because I think what I did is I pushed it through some fluid film so it's got some poo on the end of it now so it can't focus. There we go, there's those bolts I was talking about. Those don't have hardly any rust, if any at all, on them. So yeah, when I said the frame of this Jeep is clean, I meant it. So anyway, as far as this unit right here is concerned, uh, my first impressions and review of it seems to work pretty well. Uh, relatively easy to figure things out on it. Again, it is the Depstech DS520. Like I said, it does come with an instruction manual. I am sure it is probably in broken English, uh, as most of them are, but just glancing at it real quick, it's at least legible and able to be deciphered. So not a, uh, not a huge thing. So yeah, make sure you check out their website. I will put a link down in the uh, description of the video. Uh, I have to let them know when this is being released. She mentioned something about possibly having a discount for the viewers. So definitely check that out and take advantage of it. And uh, yeah, we'll get back to the video. All right, guys, we're gonna get started with the top removal and replacement, I guess. Uh, like I mentioned, this is a brand new top, but it's got a manufacturer defect. So we're gonna get it replaced. It's pretty simple. Take out all the windows, unclip your uh, header bar up front. And the only thing different from just normal taking it down is your crossbar that is right in front of the sound bar or the mid bar of your roll cage. Uh, the fabric is wrapped around one of the cross pieces. You need to unhook that. It's just Velcro or hook and loop tape. And then in the back under here, right under these edges, there are three snap clips I think, yep, three snap clips on either side. So go ahead and get all of that unhooked and then we can get her folded back. All right, so everything is unhooked. Top is down. You can see I've just got it all pulled back right over the spare tire here. Uh, we're going to take this whole thing and flip it over the other direction, leaving the header bar in the down position. Then you're gonna kind of work your corners up and over. And you can pull it back and expose the screws along the bottom side of the header panel. Now I'll move the camera to get you guys a little bit better view of what I'm talking about. All right, as you can see, this is your header panel right here. Right here is where the fabric actually screws down to it. If you read the instructions that come 
from Best Top, it says there's like five screws holding all this on. I have never seen one with that few and I've done a few of these. Uh, mine has, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 14 screws across the front of it. Uh, and they all look like their factory position. You'll also have two screws in the corners right here. Mine have already been taken off because I was trying to get everything adjusted and I'll cover that whole thing later. But uh, I took mine off trying to adjust this defective top to no avail. So you can do this with a regular Phillips head screwdriver uh, or like I do with power tools. You just have to be careful when you're putting it back on using power tools that you don't get too ridiculous with things. All right, that's all there is to that. At this point, the old top is disconnected and you can do whatever you're gonna do with it. This one uh, apparently best top doesn't want back, so it's going on marketplace, I guess. But your new top, you want to, before you go to try to put it on, set her out in the sun, let it get nice and warm and soft. Mine's over some saw horses there, but uh, you wanna make sure you do that so that it is easier to put on. I'm gonna let that sit out there for another 20 minutes or so, then we'll bring you back in and go through the process of putting it on. All right, so I had the top out there for about a half hour, sitting in the sun, getting warm. So obviously this is the new top. Got it on upside down and backwards, laid out across the uh, roll bar. The center, you're gonna have two screw holes right next to each other, or well, inch and a half, two inches apart from each other. And there's gonna be a little V-shaped notch cut in the top, that marks the center. Center is pretty obvious on this. It's two screw holes that are right next to each other and there's a molding mark right there. So basically, you're just gonna screw it down, start at the center, work your way out, and then the top actually wraps back around this so these screws aren't even exposed anymore. And then we'll work the corners out here around, then we can flip it back up into place. It's really simple, guys. You don't, you really don't need to pay a upholstery shop or a, you know somebody like that for this it's not that difficult When you do take the screws out, there are going to be uh, different screws on the two end pieces on those little flaps. Uh, the ones for across the header here, you'll notice are a pan head screw. They're about three quarters of an, or sorry, half inch long. And those ones go across here. Then the ones that have the little beveled head, those ones are the ones for the the end pieces. Just pay attention when you're taking them out. If I had to guess, the reason why both of the, or the three of the Jeeps that I've put tops on have had more screws than Best Top says they should have is probably because both of mine and the other one I did all had had new tops on since the time they were new. So they probably had added some because these areas right in here on both sides uh, have always had extra screws added on. I don't know 
why that is, I've always just kind of added them back in. But you know what? We're gonna put this on on without them. We're gonna see how it works. If we gotta add them, we'll add them. We'll put it on with the number of screws that Best Top says we should have. And that's that many. All right. At this point, we're gonna lift up the header and kind of take the top over the edge. It's kind of a pain if you got somebody to help you. Probably wouldn't be the worst idea. The fabric does have some give to it, but you don't wanna go pulling on it too much. This is why you let it set out in the sun and warm up. Let me see if I can get you in where you can see what I'm doing. Let's see here. This right here, you're gonna take this little triangle shaped tab. It needs to be around this side of this header. So that it pulls around. Like that. There's your tab now. Sorry for all the screwy camera work. At this point, we can take it and flip the top down. And what you want to do is you want to make sure there's a seam right along the, uh, that goes right along the front piece of the header. You wanna to try to wrap the fabric around so that, that seam is right on that edge. And it'll kind of pull into place once you get the top up, but in order to not struggle with it too bad, try to kind of get it there to begin with. Knock you guys out of position. All right. The next thing I do is you get these three snaps on either side secured to your back rail here. That flap will wrap around the back side of the rail. And 
then the snaps are on the front side of it. All right, inside here, your mid rail right here just has fabric with the uh, Velcro on it and it just wraps around and Velcros together. I'm just gonna do this real quick. Doesn't have to be perfect. We still got a couple more screws to put in up in those corners. All right, this little tab here is going to screw into this little hole right back here that you really can't see because I can't get you any closer. But you're gonna make sure that the top is pulled tight around the corner of your header, but not too tight when you look down it this edge should be straight running with the vehicle. You can kind of feel where, where the hole is with your thumb. Make a little indentation so you know where you're putting your screw in because there's not a hole already in this. This is the uh, self-adjust yourself part of the top. And same thing over on the other side. All right, in theory, that should be all good. And go ahead and flip the top up, see what we end up with here. I tell you what, all around this replacement top fits better than the other one does. The other one must have been made on a Friday. This thing is much more snug than the other one, just all around. All right, looks a lot better. I could probably stand to do a little bit of adjustment on those little tabs, but all in all, it's much better than it was. I'll get the windows zipped in it real quick. Not gonna record that. And then uh, we'll uh, get it outside and close this thing out. All right, here you guys go. Finished product, new top is on. Hitch has been installed. Bike rack fits. Uh, it's a close fit on this uh, particular bike rack for the bike that is closest to the spare tire when you have 31s on there, but still fits, so not bad. And then as you can see, taillights kind of get blocked with the bikes a bit. So I'm thinking about putting like a third brake light or something on the bike rack 
itself that'll plug into those trailer wiring and hopefully that'll resolve some of that. Uh, as far as the top is concerned, still have to pull it outside, let it sit in the sun, get some of the wrinkles out of it. Um, might have to do a little bit of adjustment right here on that tab to pull it in, but it's better than it was. It isn't a big hoop right there. So yeah, I am happy with it. And I think we are pretty much done with the Jeep. So good. Now we can move back to the, uh, back to Cutlass over there. So all right guys, thanks for checking out the video. It wasn't a real in-depth one here today, but you know, that's fine. Uh, I'm ready for something a little easier to do, but I know some of the camera shots for the top and everything weren't the greatest, but it's hard to, I'm, I'm filming with a, uh, a GoPro, so you can't really zoom on things. So it's kind of hard sometimes to get things in there to really show what they're doing. Definitely, if you're putting on a best top top, go visit their website. They do have videos to uh, show a little bit better, you know, with professional camera people doing it. So might want to check that out. But just to show you, they are not hard. Don't pay somebody to do it unless you're physically not capable of doing it yourself. You don't need to pay somebody. Uh, as you can see, I've got the bikes on the back of the uh, Jeep. That is my main purpose in installing that hitch. So uh, everything seems to fit well, should work out well for my purposes. Uh, like I said before, don't go trying to tow some five or $6,000 boat down to the river. That's probably not gonna work out well for you. Although I did have a buddy that used to tow a 175 Bayliner with his TJ. So, I mean, they, they will do it. They don't stop real well though. But anyway, again, thanks for hanging out. Uh, make sure you hit the like, share, subscribe. Check out the link in the description for the Depstech Endoscope. Um, and I hope I'm saying that right. I do think that for the price point that they sell those for, uh, it's a pretty good deal. It seems like a, a nice unit and According to the lady that I was emailing with, they are supposed to have some sort of a uh, special deal for the viewers. I don't know what that is at the time that I'm recording this, but definitely check them out if you're in the uh, market for an endoscope. And uh, in the future, if anybody offers to have me review something for them, that's fine, but I'm gonna do it the same way. I don't. I'm not putting out review, five-star reviews for products I have never even seen. That's just, uh, I don't think that's fair to the consumer. So anyway, we'll uh, catch you next time. Not sure what we're gonna be working on, but it'll be something. Later.